Hacking for Dummies, a guide for the rest of us, particularly GCSE ICT students. What is hacking? Well, hacking is getting into someone's computer without their permission. This could be done via the network and the internet, or it could be done by getting their username and password and sitting down at it. When you get into a computer, if you're a hacker, you may just want to look around and see what's there. You may decide you want to execute commands and do things for some reason best known to yourself, or you may even choose to steal their data. Is it illegal? Very. No country in the world permits hacking, to my knowledge, and you can often go to prison for a very long time. So, why do we do it? Well, there are three categories of hacker. First, there are the hackers who I would term as geeks or nerds. And they do it not because they have any malicious intent, not because they want to do anyone damage or harm, but they do it to see if they can do it as a challenge, a test, to break things down. Secondly, there are political hackings. The example on the screen now is of Anonymous, a US-based hacker group who, when they passed the ACTA laws, hacked and published a phone call between the FBI and Scotland and took down the CIA website. Organisations like WikiLeaks are, again, a good example of these kind of hackers. They get the information and publish them and cause damage to those who they think need damaging. Finally, espionage. Cyber espionage is becoming very, very big. Countries will hack into another nation's computers either to gain details and information or in order to damage their systems. The Iranians suffered a major hack earlier this year when their nuclear control systems were broken into and most of their nuclear centrifuges were damaged. Whilst of course no one has accepted responsibility for this hack, most feel it is likely to have been Israel who hacked the computers. So, how do they hack? Well, the most simple way to hack is human weakness. About 12 years ago now, a virus went around the world several times within two hours of it being launched. It was known as the I Love You virus. You would open your email in Outlook, a message would be there from a friend saying I love you. You would say ah or uh, and then you would open it. Mistake. It contained a macro virus, a bug, and this would then email the same message to everyone else in your inbox address book. Keyloggers. Keyloggers are either hardware or software devices. They record all the keys pressed on a computer. If you see someone's username, you can normally be fairly sure the next thing they type will be their password. You have got their username and password, you can go in and pretend you are them. Often, weak passwords or poor password security is responsible for hacking. Passwords like 123456, password, QWERTY, or people writing them down and leaving them around, as in the picture, are a major weakness in networks. Finally, some chips and hardware do have weaknesses and shortcomings, or things that they don't check, and these can be exploited and used to access a computer. Viruses. In the world today, there are three types of virus. Firstly, is the Trojan horse. 
the original Trojan horse was a very large horse left outside the city of Troy by the Greeks. The Trojans thought, wow, what a nice prize. And they pulled the horse into their city and then had a party. However, inside the horse were 25 Greek soldiers and as soon as everyone was drunk and passed out, they charged out of the horse, opened the gates and let in the entire Greek army. Worms. The I love you virus we just discussed is a good example of a worm. A worm will get into a computer system, usually via email. It then replicates and then replicates again. And then again, and again, and again. And eventually it will spread around the world very quickly and easily. It won't normally do that much damage. Often worms are spread through the use of macros, which are short pieces of software written for Microsoft Office, which tells the computer how it must respond. So, how do you secure your computer from these nasty, horrible little things? Firstly, you should install an antivirus program. Some classics are here. Antiviruses have got two techniques they use to catch programs that are viruses. One, they always check the internet every day and they get a list of viruses they should be looking out for. Secondly, they use a heuristic scanner which will go through and it will find any virus-like activities on your computer. A firewall allows only data you have asked for to go in and out of your computer, which means you will have find it much easier to keep your system secure. Finally, if you are attacked by malware or Trojan horse, Usually this comes in the form of a box saying your computer is, uh, is in danger, is not secure, then please click here to install the software. That software, if you click it, will then install malware or Trojan horses with lots of bugs. Adware is a free program which is very good for stopping these bugs taking effect. So. This week's work. A company, Warsaw Llamas, has asked you to prepare a report on internet security and the staff train training package to accompany it. It should cover all areas and advise them on all likely risks and solutions. Now, this report should contain a Word document looking at all possible threats to internet security and advising which ones are likely and when. It should also advise solutions to this and contain a presentation and posters on how internet security can be delivered best by staff. Thank you and good luck.